I need spend no time whatsoever on the proposition that the state of schooling, elementary, secondary, higher schooling in the United States is deplorable. That evidence is available for all of us to see. It is a conclusion that all of us recognize and are aware of. At the lower levels, we have seen problems arise, particularly in the major cities and particularly in the inner cities. We have seen problems of discipline, problems of schools becoming places for keeping people rather than for schooling and educating people. The, ba the one reason, the immediate reason, the reason that we can all see is the increasing centralization and bureaucratization of schooling. Education has increasingly become centralized, has increasingly moved away from the control of the local community to the control of broader and broader communities. It has moved away from control of the parents to control by educational administrators. Now, there is nothing wrong with educational administrators. They are fine people. Indeed, some of my best friends are educational administrators. So I have no prejudice against them. But as in every area, the question is, is the ultimate task of schooling the children running the administrators, or are the administrators running that task? Who's in the set? So you have a crystal clear illustration of the tendency that the more you centralize authority and bureaucratize it, the more it costs you to produce less and less. Now let me turn to my more fundamental reason. Why is it that the role of government in education has been increasing? Why is it that the parents have been given less control and the administrators more. And the increasing role of government in education is true not only at the elementary level, not only at the secondary level, it's also true at the university and college levels. Fundamentally, I believe, it reflects part, it's part of a general shift from the philosophy of individual responsibility that prevailed in the 19th and early 20th century to an increasing belief in social responsibility. The view of the 19th century view was that an individual was fundamentally responsible for himself. It was up to him to make his way in the world. He was responsible for his success, and he had to bear the responsibility for his failures. Of course, everybody realizes, everybody realized then, that an individual was much affected by the circumstances of the society, that an individual who was fortunate enough to be in the United States could do a lot better with his life than an individual who was born in India or in Africa or in a less developed country. So this wasn't to say that society didn't matter, but it was to say that the function of government and of the social setting was to provide the individual with the maximum opportunity to express his own values, to develop his own capacities in accordance with his own Now, values. how can you give parents more power? Here's a very simple scheme for doing so. It's a scheme that is very old that I personally happen to have been trying to recommend and propose now for over 20 years. It's called the voucher plan. And this plan is a very simple one. It says you're a parent, you're sending your children to school, the government is providing public schools for your children to go to. If you decide, if you would like to send your child to another school, a private school, you're saving the city money. The city doesn't have to spend, the city of New York today doesn't have to spend $2,728 per pupil to school those children who are going to non-public schools. Well, therefore, the city should say, very well, if you relieve us of the expense of schooling your child, we will give you a voucher, a piece of paper, worth a certain sum of money which you may use for one purpose and one purpose only, to pay the cost of schooling your child in any school you want to go to. Now, I say the city of New York would save $2,728, but I want to make this proposal attractive to everybody, and I think it would be very attractive to parents if instead of their getting a voucher for $2,728, they were to get a voucher for $2,000 or $1,500 or $1,000. 
In the usual rule, I would estimate that to have schooling provided privately of, this, of better quality would cost half as much. So that if you gave parents $1,500, they would be able to acquire with that better schooling than they're now getting for the $2,700 that is being spent on their account. Well, then the voucher scheme would say, any parent who chooses to send his child to a school other than the governmental public school is entitled to a voucher which he can use for the payment of tuition and costs at that school. It's exactly the same principle that was applied after World War II and much more recently in the so-called GI Bill for returning veterans. They chose their school. This was at the college level. They went to the University of Chicago or they went to Notre Dame or they went to uh, NYU or City College or wherever they went to. And they were entitled to receive, as long as they could show they were going to school, they were entitled to receive so much per month. In that case, the voucher covered not only tuition, but also living expenses. So I do not mean to say that the road is easy. But I only say that first, we know what the right thing to do is. And second, there is support for it. There are people who are interested in this. There are possibilities of moving in this direction. And it is the most promising direction. It is the only way I can see that we have a hope of turning around the trend that has been going on. So I say to you, go to it, parents. You have everything to gain for your children. 